Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Siner. Today, Bob will discuss rules for becoming a data steward. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just to note, Zoom defaults the chat to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. For questions, we will be collecting them by the Q&A section. And to find the chat and the Q&A panels, you may click those icons in the bottom middle of your screen to activate those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I'll give the floor to Bob to start his presentation. Hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. Hi, everybody. Thank you, everybody, like I do all the time, for taking time out of your Really busy schedules, I am certain, to um, to sit through the webinar, either live or if you're listening to a recording of this. This is one of my favorite subjects. I know I talk about a lot of different subjects, and I say that a lot of them are my favorite subjects. But if you're implementing a data governance program, and most likely you are or you're related to working with somebody who is implementing a data governance program, data stewardship is something that's really near and dear to you. And... I came up with a series of rules that I use to help people, to help organizations to associate people to become data stewards. So I'm looking forward to addressing this subject with you. Data stewardship is near and dear probably to a lot of people that are on this uh, on this webinar today because they, people know that the stewards are basically the heartbeat of a successful data governance program. So we'll talk a, a, a lot about what those rules are, why the rules are necessary, how to create rules specifically to your org, specific to your organization. Before I get started, I just want to go through a couple of things that I am presently working on. Um, as you know, with this webinar series every month, the, the topic we're going to address next month is also one that's being a question that's being asked all the time. I'm seeing it in LinkedIn uh, chat groups and in groups as well where people want to differentiate between data management and data governance. I'm going to talk about specifically how they overlap, also how they're different in the webinar next month. Um, I will be speaking at the upcoming event in San Diego, uh, the Data Diversity uh, event of Data Governance and Information Quality uh, West, DGIQ West in June. Um, I have a bit of news about the Non-Invasive Data Governance book. Actually, the second book, Non-Invasive Data Governance Strikes Again, well, now we know as of yesterday that the release date for that is going to be June 1st. So if you're looking for that, that's a great thing. Um, I have a couple of online learning plans available through Dataversity. So go please take a look at those, on, one on non-invasive data governance, one on non-invasive metadata governance, and then one that focuses specifically on business glossaries, dictionaries, and catalogs. Then there's my KIK consulting business, and, and I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Um, my my uh, monthly, twice monthly publication, and I also work on in the time that I have with Carnegie Mellon University as an adjunct faculty member working with them. So what are we going to talk about today? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline for you eight rules for people to become data stewards or how to associate people or recognize people in the organization as being data stewards. And then I'm going to talk about why those rules are specifically the rules and why, you know, maybe how you can then figure out when you're determining who your stewards are, um, how to create some custom rules for yourself and for your organization. We'll talk about how to apply the stewardship rules across the organization and how the rules add value. So let's, um, let's start by as I typically would start in these webinars, but by talking with about some definitions that I, I typically use. And the, the three terms that I like to define specifically for this webinar is data governance, because again, it's a data governance webinar, but specifically what I mean by stewardship, because I think that's going to have a lot to do with how you understand some of the rules that I'm going to talk about here on the next slide. Um, I refer to data governance as being the execution and enforcement of authority over data. I know that's worded very strongly, but at the end of the day, 
when it comes to regulatory control, when it comes to improving the quality of the data, you need to be able to execute and enforce authority. It doesn't mean that you have to be invasive in your approach. It just means at the end of the day, there are certain rules if we're going to improve our data situation that we need to execute and enforce authority over. And then when it comes to stewardship, and I talk about stewardship as being, like I said before, the heartbeat of your data governance program, really the backbone of your program, I define stewardship as being formal accountability for data. And in many organizations, there's already people that are formally accountable, or there's already people that are accountable for data, maybe less formally than you need. And that's one of the core tenets of the, the concept of non-invasive data governance is let's formalize existing levels of accountability wherever we can identify those. And so stewardship is the formalization of the accountability for data. And I refer to a, a data steward as being a person in the organization that's being held formally accountable for what they do with the data. So if they define data and they're being held formally accountable for putting together a good definition of the data, um, they're a steward. If they're producing data and they're being held formally accountable for the quality of the data they produce, they're a steward of the data production. If they use data, and a lot of people use data, um, people need to be held accountable for how they use that data too. And typically, and you probably heard me say before, that everybody is a data steward. And that's really the only way that we can cover the entire organization because most people either define and or produce and or use data as part of their job. And if we can hold them formally accountable for how they define, produce, and use data, then they're stewards. And so potentially everybody in the organization is a steward. I'm sure you'll hear me say that again at least once during this webinar. Just wanted to throw out a couple more definitions, a definition of metadata being it's the data about the data basically that improves both the business and technical understanding of the data. And there is such a thing as metadata governance. I mean, the fact is that the metadata is not going to define, produce and use itself, that there need to be people that are accountable for the metadata as well. So when I'm talking about data stewards throughout today's webinar, we can also think of it in terms of the metadata stewards because metadata stewards, somebody has to, put a good definition to the data, it's not gonna happen magically. Somebody's gotta produce the metadata, it's not gonna happen magically. So when I say the data will not govern itself, I also say the metadata will not govern itself. There needs to be a concentrated effort on working on these things. So what are we here to talk about today? We're gonna to talk about eight specific rules that I have identified, and maybe you didn't know that there, that there were rules associated with becoming a data steward. And maybe uh, you know these, these rules will be helpful to you, but I think it's a good way of looking at, well, how do we determine who the stewards of the data are within our organization? And there's been some debates online through LinkedIn this week about the term stewardship versus the, the term ownership. Um, the term stewardship is becoming more prevalent and more used because the definition of a steward is somebody that takes care of something for somebody else. Instead of owning it, there's people that are stewarding the data. And so I figured it's good. It's a good timing right now to talk about some, some rules associated with making certain that we are recognizing the right people as being data stewards in the organization. So here's the eight rules. We'll just share these rules and then we'll move on uh, uh, actually, no, we're, this is not the entire webinar. We're not just going to show these eight rules here. We're going to go through each one of them in details and talk about why the rules are the rules when it comes to recognizing people as being data stewards. I know there's been a lot of conversation recently about people not wanting, wanting to become the owners of the data because they don't really understand what it means to be the owners of the data. And I typically suggest that organizations shy away from using the term owner and they start to use the term steward. And so the rules that I want to focus on are, number one, a steward can be anybody. And we'll talk a little bit more about how steward can be basically everybody within the organization and how stewardship it's not a title, it's not a position, it really describes a relationship between people and data. So if you are using data that is sensitive and you're expected to protect that data, you're a steward of that data. 
it's not something that you can opt into or opt out of because if you are using sensitive data, you're expected to protect that data. Typically, a steward's not hired to be a data, at least they're not hired typically to be a data steward specifically. And so I'll go into a little bit more detail about what I mean by that. A data steward does not have to have the title of being a data steward. A steward doesn't have to be told how to do their job. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, also, I know that there are organizations that provide public stewardship certification. And I just don't believe it's valuable because stewards are just everybody within the organization doing their jobs, understanding how they play a role in how the how the data is being governed within the organization. So I don't like the idea of data steward certification, at least when it comes to kind of public certification. Another one of the rules is that more than one data steward exists for each data type. I know that there's a lot of organizations. Let's go to Mary when we want to talk about customer data. Let's go to Joe when we want to talk about product data. Um, there's obviously a lot more stewards in the organization than just those individuals. So another rule is that there's more than one data steward exists for each data type. And then the last rule is how data steward training should focus on formalizing accountability for the relationships that people already have with data. Okay, so let's go through each of the rules one by one. So I defined before that a data steward is a person that is held formally accountable for what they do with the data, for the, their relationship to the data. And I typically define the relationships as being somebody who defines data, produces data, and uses data. So think about everybody in your organization and how potentially everybody has a relationship to the data. We, as people who are putting governance programs together, need to know who those people are. So we need to know who these stewards are, even if we're not going and tagging them on the shoulder and saying, hey, you're a data steward, go start doing data steward stuff. We can't expect that to happen. We need to help them to become better stewards, but potentially anybody in the organization, or as I say a lot, everybody is a data steward. And I tell organizations to get over that fact. You need to make certain that your program is has the ability to handle that as a complexity. Again, you're not going to engage all of these people every day as a data steward, and there's different levels of data stewards within the organization, but potentially everybody, well, you know, everybody in the organization that uses PII data has to know the rules and protect the, the personally identifiable information. So if you keep kind of following that rule forward, potentially everybody in the organization is a steward of the data. And one of the problems is that people right now, right out of the gate, they don't recognize themselves as being data stewards and they need some assistance to even understand what it means to be a steward or if you're even gonna use that label of steward within your organization. You know, we as the practitioners of data governance, we need to help them. We need to help them to understand that they are stewards. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more here in a couple of minutes about just getting stewards to recognize that they are the, the appropriate people to go to, to involve when you have questions about the data or in resolving issues around the data. So the truth is that out of all eight rules that I'm going to talk about today, this rule is the one that really changes the culture when it comes to data stewardship. Um, you'll notice, and I've talked before when I compare approaches to data governance, that I don't like the idea of, of assigning people to be data stewards. The word assign um, immediately feels like it's over and above what they're presently doing. I use the term recognizing people as being data stewards. Recognizing people has a positive connotation that comes along with it. If we can get people to say, okay, yes, I do use sensitive data. And yes, I do need to understand the rules that I need to follow to protect that sensitive data. And then help them to acknowledge then, yeah, you know what, they're stewards of the data and that they need to be treated you know, uh, accordingly, treated as stewards of the data in the organization. Truly, this is the rule that changes the culture of the organization. It helps everybody in the organization to start to become data literate. So data stewardship also describes a relationship to data and it's not a position. And I know that I'll probably talk about this several times throughout the webinar, 
But there are basically three actions that people can take with data. And in the chat, which I can't see right now, but feel free to chat about it. If you can think of other actions or actions that don't fall under the definition, production or usage of data, I'd love to, to know what they are. Because I think, you know, analytics or protection of data, they fall under usage of data. You know, quality could fall under production. Um, glossaries and dictionaries could fall under definition of data. But people basically take three actions with data. And if we can recognize who those people are and who's doing what with data across the organization, then they're stewards of the data. And you know what? We don't need to go to them and and give them the title of being a data steward, because then everybody would be a data steward. It, the, the relationship as a definer, a producer, or a user of the data, that action really defines what level of steward somebody is. You know, if somebody's looking out for data or has decision-making authority over data for the entire organization, that's different than the people that are day-to-day -day within the operational unit. So there's different types of stewards, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we move forward here as well. I see organizations all the time that are looking to hire data stewards. If you fall on uh, in the belief, or if you have the belief that you know you're going to recognize stewards based on what they do with the data, you don't need to hire people in to be data stewards. You need to hire people in to fill specific rules roles, R-O-L-E-S, and, you know, depending on their relationship to the data, they would instantly become a data steward. So you're not typically going to hire a person to do a data steward. You might hire people to do data steward type things like build out your dictionary, work with your true data steward to do those things, but you're not going to hire a person to be a data steward but you're going to hire them into the role that is being, they're ex being expected to follow, that the, the task that is expected of them when they become hired. So new hires don't know the data like the people that you already have in the organization. You know, be, being a data steward becomes automatic to anybody that you hire if they have a relationship to the data, and that's probably going to be everybody. Um, being a data steward somewhere else. And I know people like to say, well, I was a data steward at XYZ Corporation. Well, that's good that they've had an experience of being a data steward, but do they know the data within ABC organization? So being a steward somewhere else, it helps, but it doesn't mean that they know your data. It doesn't mean that they know your process. It doesn't know that they know your people, the politics, the culture of the organization, so being a steward somewhere else, it helps, but it doesn't mean that they can instantly become a steward of data within your organization. They can help to impact the culture. But again, steward being a steward somewhere else can help, but it's not the entirety. You're not, again, hiring somebody to be a data steward. It's a steward or a steward based on their relationship to the data. So I guess you know, data stewards are hired in the in the long run but they're typically just not hired to be data stewards. Okay, so that's the third rule. The fourth rule is we don't need to call a data steward a data steward. If everybody in the organization is a steward of the data based on their relationship to the data, it would be silly to have everybody have the same title of data steward. And you know, being, like I said, said several times already, being a steward basically focuses on that relationship people have for the data we need to know who these people are. We don't need to call them all data stewards. But the fact is that you're gonna have a lot of data stewards within your organization. Again, if you're following the idea that anybody who has a relationship to the data, who's being held formally accountable is a steward of the data. So we don't have to call them data stewards in order for them to be data stewards. This is the one that I get a lot of questions about that a steward doesn't have to be told how to do their job. Um, basically, data governance and the data governance function doesn't have the authority over people within the organization, at least not typically. So they don't, data governance, again, doesn't have the authority to tell business people what to do, but the function of data governance does provide guidelines and rules around how the people should follow to improve the quality and the value and the confidence and the trust and the understanding of the data. So 
data governance does play a big role, but data governance oftentimes doesn't have the authority to tell people how to do their job. So you might hear a lot about federated models for data governance programs, where there's a central group that has the responsibility for setting guidelines and minimal standards, but they don't have the authority to be able to enforce those rules. That enforcement might need to be done by somebody else, but again, a steward doesn't have to be told exactly what they need to do. Um, they just need to sit, you know, follow these guidelines, follow these rules, and you will help us to steward our data better. So data governance shares the guidelines and the rules. It's up to the stewards, again, being anybody in the organization, their management to instruct them how to do their job. It's up to their management to evaluate how they're doing their job. Data governance doesn't really have the authority to do that. But one thing that data governance can do is it can highlight when people are not doing things in standards that have been, uh, have been approved successfully within the organization. Um, the, the sixth one was the public or industry certification is a load of bunk. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on that, but people's activities as stewards, they're not stewards first. They're, they're holding the role that they hold within the organization first. They're stewards, again, because they have a relationship to the data. So people's activities are very specific to the way things are being done within their part of the organization, within your organization. And so to have somebody be certified in how to do what they already do or what they're being paid to do, I don't think it makes a lot of sense. And the stewards' responsibilities aren't exactly the same from organization to organization or from day to day. And as I mentioned before, there's different levels of stewards. There's people that are subject matter experts for domains or subject matters within your organization. And then there's operational stewards that are day-to-day -day defining, producing, and using data. So I'm not sure that you're going to get that out of, out of data steward certification. Um, can somebody else certify people in your organization as to how to do their job? Maybe they can educate them on what stewardship is and how stewardship is important. I just don't like the idea, obviously, of data stewardship certification. And I, I don't think it's really valuable, but love to debate that with somebody if they were interested in debating about that. So the seventh rule out of the eight are that there's more than one steward type or one steward for each data type. So there's going to be, there could be potentially, if you talk about having silos of data within your organization, there may be three different people that define the same data differently in different parts of the organization. You want to know who those people are. Um, there are there are multiple people that could be producing data. There could be multiple, there's obviously multiple people that are using the data. And if they're being held accountable for what they do with the data, then they're stewards of the data. So obviously then the rule, this rule applies that there's more than one data steward for each type of data. Because obviously if you have multiple people using the same data, they all need to follow the rules associated with protecting that data, for example. So stewards are people, again, held formally accountable for their relationship to the data. There's multiple people that are defining, producing, and using the same data. As I mentioned before, and I've talked about it in other webinars focused on roles and responsibilities, there are multiple levels of data stewards. There's operational level stewards, and then there's the tactical stewards who are looking at the data more as a cross-business unit um, asset to the organization. So operational stewards are very active, as I said before, within their business unit, and the tactical stewards are accountable for data across business units. But the fact is that more than one data steward exists for each data type. And if you are an organization that says, well, you know, Mary is the, the data steward of this data, what do you mean by that? Do you mean that they're the tactical steward of that data? Or you know, what, what role do they play? You know, certainly understanding that there's a lot of people using customer data, for example. So there should be a lot of people that are have a relationship to that data. And if they're held accountable, again, they become stewards of the data. And then the final rule is the data steward training should focus on formalizing accountability. And so my first question would be, well, formalizing accountability for what? And so I wanted to just share with you formalizing accountability for the actions people take with data, 
you know, how people define data, when they define data, how they produce data, how they use data. All of these things are really critical. Data stewards need to be trained. Again, as I mentioned before, if everybody is a data steward, we can't expect them to just start doing data steward stuff. They need to be educated. They need to be trained on what it means. Why have they been identified? And why have they been recognized as being stewards? And how can they help to steward the data better for the organization? So that's just the that's the eight roles. And that's I just wanted to go through those quickly. And I think it makes sense that we should talk about why those rules are the rules and how they kind of came to be the rules. But again, they're not the know-all and be-all. Make rules for your organization that make sense to you, again, depending on the approach that you're taking. If you're taking a more of a command and control approach, you may be assigning specific individuals to be data stewards. So you know, again, make the rules the way that, that they need to be for your organization. Okay, so why are the rules, why the rules are the rules? Well, first of all, because they make sense. Because this approach to recognizing people in the organization with relationships to the data is truly the only way to cover the entire organization. So the only way to cover the organization is to follow these rules because it makes it easier to recognize people rather than to assign people as stewards. Recognizing the stewards is less invasive Let's go through each of these uh, questions of why the rules are the rules. Well, first of all, I believe that the rules are practical and doable. So, if, and, and that's one of the, the things that you should be considering for your best practices too, is anything that you define as best practice has to be practical and doable. So when you're defining rules, don't define a rule that is not achievable within your organization. So it, it just, it makes sense. And a lot of these rules make sense. I mean, that you would think that anybody who uses sensitive data would be held accountable for how they use that data. So they're practical and they are doable within an organization. It may add a level of complexity to your data governance program, but there's certainly a lot of organizations that are taking this to heart and are starting to recognize people as stewards rather than just assigning a handful or a couple dozen people as being data stewards. So the other criteria I use for best practice is that you're at risk if it's not achieved. Well, if you take some other type of approach, if you assign people to be data stewards and you only have one type of data steward, your organization might be at risk. So you're at risk if you're taking some other action. That's one of the reasons why this rule, these rules are the rules because I think they make sense. If you can think of another way of covering the entire organization, go ahead and try to assign everybody in the organization into a role, it's not going to work. But if you recognize that people that use certain data are stewards, you know, it makes it e easier for you to cover the entire organization. And the, probably the most important thing is that because these rules are really non-invasive. Because again, you're not giving people things that they don't already have. And people like the concept. They like things that don't give them more work. They like things that are non-invasive. Because the only way, this is truly, as I said before, the only way to cover the entire organization is if you follow the rules. So think about how people will respond if, to, if you assign people to be data owners or you assign people to be data stewards the number one assumption should be that they're already busy more than 100% of the time. So being assigned something is going to immediately feel as though it's new and it's going to feel like it's over and above. And the question that they're going to have is, well, what am I going to do? What am I not supposed to do when I'm do spending my time being a data steward? People don't like being assigned to anything. I don't like being assigned to anything. Being assigned a data steward might not be acceptable to people. Identifying people as data stewards, it also might not be that effective. I mean, it's nice to be identified, but unless there's any clout or there's any reasoning behind the identification, it might not be that effective either. But recognizing people for what they do with the data and helping them to do it better, you know, that assures that everybody who is active with data, if you can apply accountability for that activity, that's going to cover your entire organization. 
So back on January 3rd, 2018, in the TDAN publication, I wrote an article that it was called Everybody is a Data Steward, Get Over It. Because it's not until the, the idea that, and I don't mean to be rude by saying get over it. Okay, maybe a little bit. But uh, I'm not, not trying to be rude. It's just that people need to, to understand that potentially everybody in the, in the organization is a steward of the data. Uh, why are the rules the rules? Because it makes it easier to recognize people as stewards. Recognizing people into roles is a natural way of being able to figure out who does what with the data in the organization. There's a positive nature also, as well as being recognized for something. So instead of being assigned, instead of just being identified, recognizing somebody into a role makes it a lot easier. And, and it, it has a positive connotation that comes along with it. It's nice to be recognized for something. You know, you're, the idea of being non-invasive is that you're not giving people accountability that they don't already supposedly have. If they're already accessing data that has rules associated with how they protect it, I'm sure that they're being expected to follow those rules. So you're not really, so formalizing that level of accountability is different than handing it to somebody as something that feels like it's something they didn't already have. So people cannot opt out of being recognized as a steward. If you're producing a certain type of data, and you have accountability for the quality of the data that you're producing, you can't say, no, I'm not going to be a data steward of that data. You're naturally a data steward because you are the one who is, is producing that data. And as I said before, the recognizing the stewards is less invasive than assigning people to be data stewards. You know, what I have seen in organizations that people are a lot more acceptable to being recognized into roles versus being assigned or being identified. So formalizing, you know, I had this conversation with a client the other day who was telling me about how in reality, they don't have tons of resources that are sitting around waiting to be stewards of the data. They were thinking that data stewardship is gonna require a lot of resources in a lot of different parts of the organization and I suggested to them that that's not necessarily true, because if you're just formalizing accountability where it already exists, you're not adding people. In fact, you're going to be saving them time, hopefully in the long run, and getting them to follow the rules. So if you focus on formalizing behavior rather than assigning new responsibility to people and, and thinking that you're going to need to add more people, the, the approach of recognizing stewards is it requires less resources in your organization because you don't need if somebody's assigned something immediately they start thinking okay we're going to need another person to do what i used to do well no that's not the case we're just going to build it into what you do so recognizing stewards is less invasive than assigning or um, identifying people as stewards and one of the most important things I'm recognizing recently is just getting stewards to recognize themselves as stewards is a, is a really big win for the organization. So recognizing the appropriate people into the role of data steward is important and it's great, but getting people to recognize themselves as being stewards is even better. And I wrote an article a little while ago in, on TDA and I talked about how data stewards should expect a raise. And by raise, I don't mean financially. Yes, it would be wonderful if all the stewards would receive a raise, but it's more of a raise in their stature within the organization. If you're recognized as being a knowledgeable person around a certain subject area of data, then that, that certainly raises your stature within the organization because people are going to come to you when they have questions about your data. And, you know, again, getting stewards to recognize themselves it, it saves you the, the the work of going out and tagging them and telling their, them that they're data stewards. You know, it, it just, it, it's natural. People, when people get to the point where they realize that they themselves are data stewards and you don't even need to tell them that, you've kind of won the game of building stewardship into people's daily activities because they already understand that they're stewards of the data. And getting people, getting the stewards to take their role seriously and to actively engage, that's when you know your program has been successful, is when people are starting to engage because they recognize that they are themselves 
the, the subject matter experts, the knowledgeable people about the data. Okay, so let's talk about how to create custom rules. First of all, if you're going to customize the eight rules that I shared with you, they have to be defined by you. They they must also be operationalized by you. So it's important to make certain that the rules that you define are operational. They must be communicated and sold by you. And I also suggest that if this is the way that you're going to go about recognizing or, or, or getting people to be stewards, if you're going to buy into the construct of the fact that everybody is a data steward, do you need to take that to your leadership? Maybe it's a, it would be an education for them that there's different levels of people as stewards. So first of all, they must be defined by you. Typically, the rules for becoming a data steward are defined by the program administration. They're typically then approved by the program leadership. Um, oftentimes, they well, they have to be shared with the program participants, and that they have to be enforced by the program execution. So when you're defining the rules, you need to make certain that they're going to be practical and doable in your organization, and that people are accepting the idea that they're stewards of the data. And it, it takes effort. It takes a communication plan. It takes effort to get people in the organization to start to recognize themselves as being data stewards. But again, maybe this is a change of direction for your program where you already have people that you've assigned to be data stewards. It could be a way that you could enhance an existing program within your organization. Um, so what are some of the ways that you can operationalize the figuring out who the stewards are? You can build it in. You can build the stewardship into your existing projects. You can build it into existing programs. Information security programs are a level of governance within your organization. They may be able to help you to know who does what with the data and help you to recognize who some of your users are or who's even defining the rules associated with the protection of the data, just kind of building it into other existing governance-like programs will help you to operationalize those rules for becoming or for determining who the data stewards are within your organization. Um, I oftentimes suggest to organizations when they're looking to define return on investment for data governance, that they don't actually look at data governance. I suggest that oftentimes, since there's oftentimes a lot more investment being made in new technologies within the organization, the creation of an analytical platform, the creation of a data lake or a data warehouse, just to use a few, there's huge financial investment in those. And if the data isn't trusted and the data is not governed and is not of high quality, then they should expect that the return on investment in those investments is going to suffer. So building the you know, oper oper operationalization of data governance, hard to say that word, um, building it into these new and existing investments in these initiatives is important as well. And that's one way that you're going to find naturally who they're talking to within the organization, who are they're involving within the organization from a data definition, production, and usage perspective. It's going to help you to figure out who your data stewards are. Build it into project management. I typically suggest that the project management and the PMO is a partner to your data governance program. If we can build governance into the projects, maybe we can build the recognition of who the stewards are in the organization into the projects too. If you're starting from scratch or you're, you start to believe that potentially everybody is a steward, figure out who are the people that we're engaging within these projects. They're most likely the most knowledgeable people about the data. Maybe these are the people who are the stewards of the data. Again, it's a natural fit just to recognize people in the organization for what they do. And I have several organizations I'm working with right now that their idea is to take some of the, the onus, the, the responsibility of the data governance manager, take some of their responsibilities and hand it to the data stewards and get the stewards to do their quote unquote dirty work. So the more that they can engage these people that have now been recognized or recognize themselves as being data stewards, and we can get them engaged in building a glossary, building a data dictionary, determining what data resources they use, what reports they're creating. Get them to work 
cataloging some of this information, they're actually doing some of the dirty work of the administration of the program. Just like anything with data governance, data gov the, the, the rules associated with becoming a data steward, they need to be sold to the organization. So again, the theory of everybody being a data steward must be defined, it must be explained, it must be done consistently across the organization. That doesn't mean that it's, you're gonna cover the entire organization all at once, but you wanna be consistent in the way that you're of the, the whole theory or idea of everybody being a data steward. Um, get people to sign on as data stewards through the through as you're executing the program. If people reject the idea of them being a data steward, uh, one of my good friends, Gwen Thomas, I'm sure you've seen her at a Dataversity event before. She shared something with me that has stuck with me. She said, if people don't want to be data stewards, say, that's okay. We'll make decisions around your data without you. And they will say, no, 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 you can't do that. You need to involve me. Well, that's why we came to you in the first place. So if people say they don't want to be or they reject the idea of being recognized as a steward, say, okay, well, then we won't involve you in the conversations around your data and see how they respond. Oftentimes, they're going to come back and say, you know what? You need to engage me. And that that is a good way to start the conversation. And most people will agree that they are stewards until, sure in, until they find that you're being, they're being asked to do things that they don't want to do. So keep that in mind while you're communicating data stewardship and the rules for becoming a data steward to people across your organization. And the, um, the, the last idea of how to create custom rules is remember that these rules have to be approved by your leadership. Because again, if, if they may help you to identify who your tactical level stewards are, to get them to understand that, you know, if we want to change the culture of the organization, if we want to become more literate, there's a potential that we need to really embrace and change the culture of the entire organization. And we, we need to govern data as an asset. That means we need to recognize the people who define the data. We need to recognize the people who are producing the data and the people that use the data and help them to define, produce, and use the data better. Um, as I said, anybody in your organization that defines, produces, and uses data as part of their job, if they're being held formally accountable for those actions that they take with the data, they're data stewards. It's not really an option for them to opt in or opt out. So as I said, everybody is approved as a, as a data steward. You know, you want to make certain that people recognize themselves and that you at least are building into your program the idea that everybody is a data steward. All right, let's quickly just talk about how to apply the data stewardship roles. Um, recognize people as stewards, as I said before, get people to recognize themselves, recording who the stewards are, onboarding those people as stewards to help them to understand, you know, why they are data stewards, engage people as data stewards as well. So the first idea is to recognize people as data stewards. Pick an issue or an opportunity. If there's a use case that you're working on or, or something in the, and you know who the people are that are involved in the resolution of that issue, potentially they're the stewards of the data. You're naturally recognizing them because they're the people that the organization will go to to solve a problem. So just use any issue or any opportunity or even think of any question that you might receive through an email today who are you going to go to to get that question answered? Is that person the subject matter expert for that data? Is that person an operational steward? You can start to recognize people as stewards just in any opportunity or any issue that comes. Same thing holds true for a project. When you start a project, you're going to engage the right people at the right time. I talk about it as being the data governance bill of rights, getting the right people involved in the right time, in the right way in the right step. So pick a project, start to apply it. You'll start very quickly to recognize the people that are the stewards of the data because they're the people you're already involving in these projects. Pick a subject area. Okay, when we talk about customer data, we always bring Mary into the conversation. You can very naturally recognize who your stewards are or pick a part of the organization and say, who do we go to within this part of the organization? 
And of, about this type of data, again, very easy for you to begin to recognize who the stewards are. And pick a champion or two or five or six within your organization and recognize them as being stewards as well. Again, it's not difficult to recognize people as stewards, get people to recognize themselves as stewards, you know, use everyday business and technical meetings as an opportunity. You know, conversation, conversations with these people lead to data that they know about, you know, get them to recognize that, well, um, is it okay if I come back to you when I have a question about this data? And if they answer yes, then say, you know what? You're a steward of the data because you're the person that we want people to be directed to when they have a question about the data. And oftentimes people will then acknowledge and say, well, yes, uh, I guess I am a data steward or I am a steward of the data. So get people to recognize themselves as stewards is one way to apply the data stewardship rules. And then through those natural processes that I just talked about is another way to go about doing it. It's very important once you start to recognize who the stewards are, that you record who the stewards are. In fact, I have a client recently that is not even referring to them as business data stewards anymore at the tactical level. They're just referring to them as business stewards because they are the stewards of the process. They are stewards of the communications. They are the stewards of the data at the tactical level. So they've removed the word data from their title and just refer to them as business stewards. You know, knowing who your stewards are at some point, somebody's going to ask, who do I go to when I have a question about this? You know, formally document the people that define, produce, and use data. Use something like a common data matrix. And I've shared this tool, and I'm not going to go through it in a lot of detail because we're going to run out of time here real quickly. And I want to kick it back to Shannon to see if we have questions. But, you know, you start to record this information at some point in time, you're going to want to know who all the people are that define, produce, and use data from different sources, different resources within your organization. You want to onboard people as data stewards is another way of applying data stewardship roles. Don't expect that people are going to know how to do quote unquote data steward stuff. As I mentioned earlier, you know, being a steward is a new concept to a lot of people. So make sure that they understand what you're talking about. Look for ways to engage them. I wrote an article on TDAN. It's actually on the pages of TDAN now um, called Empower Your Stewards with a Data Governance Toolkit. So go look that up, provide them with tools that will help them to become better stewards and be there to answer their questions about what it means to be a data steward. Provide them with formal education and training as well. And, and as I mentioned, engage people in meetings and programs and projects through the intake process. And if we can help people to recognize not only what they steward, but who they are responsible for stewarding, where they steward, when they steward, why they steward, all of these types of things, you can start to apply stewardship right where these stewards of the data within your organization are being most active. The last thing I want to talk about, then Shannon, I'm going to kick it back to you, is you know, how do these rules add value within the organization? First thing is they cover the entire organization. I'd love to hear from somebody if they found another way other than just recognizing people for what they do to cover the entire organization. They don't assign people anything. They formalize accountability. We'll just go into just thinking about the idea of assigning somebody versus identifying versus recognizing somebody as being a data steward. I truly believe that the only way to cover the entire organization is to recognize those people that have a relationship to the data and help them to steward the data better. So. That's one way that it adds value is it makes certain that it covers the entire organization, not just those 18 data stewards that you've named so far within your organization. Oh, in this approach, these people are not being assigned anything. People already have day jobs. They're already overburdened and stretched extremely thin in what they do. And oftentimes the reason why they're overburdened and the reason why they're stretched extremely thin is because of how much time they take wrangling the data. It's oftentimes because of the data that people feel overtaxed and overburdened. If you make their life more challenging, people are gonna resist the idea. They're gonna rebel back 
against data governance. So again, don't assign people to be data stewards. It really doesn't work. People don't like to be assigned anything. But do formalize their accountability. Recognize what their actions are that they're already taking with data and do the things that you need to do to help to hold them formally accountable for how they define data, how they, how they produce data, and how they use data. So I always use as my definition of data governance that data governance is the execution and enforcement of authority. I was thinking just even per this uh, webinar, changing it to data governance is the execution and enforcement of accountability. Because if it comes down to your data stewards doing the right thing and being held accountable, data governance is certainly the execution and enforcement of accountability. And so the aim, as I mentioned before, I talk often about what I refer to as the data governance bill of rights and the word rights is within quotes because it's getting the right person at the right time for the right reason with the right data to make the right decision. You can write your own bill of rights, um, but I refer to it as the data governance bill of rights. It is truly what data governance is all about is getting the right people to do the right thing in the right way. And those right people are the stewards. I say you've won data governance, you've won the game of data governance when you build it into what people do. So the stewards of the data, you build it into what they do rather than handing it to them as something that's brand new to them, you've won the data governance game. So hopefully these rules will help you as you move forward with recognizing who the stewards are within your organization. As I always say, everybody is a data steward, get over it. And you know what? The data is not going to govern itself. You need to activate your stewards in order to be successful in your organization. And so what did we talk about today? I shared with you those eight rules for becoming a data steward, why the rules are the rules, how to create your own. I hope this was helpful to you uh, through the session. And at this point, I am going to kick it back to Shannon to see if there's any questions. Thank you so much for another great presentation. And if you have any questions for Bob, feel free to submit them in the Q&A portion of the screen. It's, and lots of questions coming in here. So diving in um, and just to answer the, uh, the most commonly asked question, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email for this webinar by end of day Monday with links to the slides and links to the recording along with anything else requested here. So um, Bob, why we do we need to differentiate data governance from metadata governance? You know what? That's a great question. I'm not sure that you really need to, but people need to understand that the metadata is not on its own going to improve. So there needs to be specific, you don't have to have something called master data governance either, or big data governance or BI data governance. Um, so you're right. It, it, you don't really need to differentiate between the two. If you can apply the same rules that you apply to data governance, to your metadata. And it does really start with the definers, the producers, and the users of the data, the definers, producers, and users of the metadata. So I only differentiate between the two because I think it's important for people to recognize that the metadata will not govern itself. Good question, though. Thank you. Agreed. So I'm interested to hear what your opinion is about the DEMA DMBOC. Um, the data body, um, data management body of knowledge? I think I've seen it once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what do I think about it? I think it is a, a, a good framework, or at least it highlights the most important knowledge areas that need to be addressed by data management practitioners. I think you see as the DM bot goes from version one to two that the, some of those knowledge areas uh, in the in the demo wheel per se are changing. You know, they they change, they're updated with the times. The one thing that doesn't change is what's smack in the middle of the framework, which is data governance. So data governance needs to be applied through all of those things. I think it's an excellent framework for using to evaluate maturity within an organization if you want to focus on specific knowledge areas. So if that's what you're looking for, that's my thoughts on the DMBOC. And Bob, if we don't formally assign the data steward role to people, how can we enforce the quote unquote authority being emphasized here? 
Well, so you're saying that if you don't go and assign somebody to be a data steward who uses your executives' financial data, their salary information, you know, the people need to be held accountable for just their relationship to the data. They don't need to be assigned that. I think it's a matter of accountability within the organization. It's the question of how do we hold somebody formally accountable for something? You don't have to assign them that. They probably already have that. They probably even were trained or were onboarded with the company to know that they, if they use sensitive data, here's the rules associated with how you need to protect that data. So I think that the you don't need to assign people. You can recognize people, but you need to help them then to be held formally accountable for that relationship. So again, another good, really good question, but think about you being on the receiving end of being assigned something and how you feel about it. It doesn't change. If you don't want to go around assigning people to protect sensitive data, because, I mean, you have to assign everybody who uses sensitive data to protect it. It was a good question. Shannon, we could do a webinar on that. We could, it's true. <laughs> um, so, but common problems that people not following data governance rules is because the consequences are lenient or non-existent. So what are some examples of consequences that motivate people to follow the rules being enforced? <laughs> Aha, I think you've hit on why I define data governance as the execution and enforcement of authority, because somebody needs to enforce the rules. You're right. If the rule in the United States was that you're supposed to drive on the right side of the road and you don't drive on the right side of the road, you drive on the left side of the road, if you don't kill somebody, you're going to get a ticket for that. So you've got to follow the rules. And, and you know, uh, I forget, what was the second half of the question, Tannen, uh, Shannon, about um, how do you enforce them? Yeah, so what are examples of some consequences that motivate people? Yeah. Well, financial consequences, losing your job, um, being reprimanded for doing things that don't follow the rules. Um, those are, are typical kind of consequences. I mean, giving people warning when they're sharing data that they shouldn't be sharing is fine until somebody in the news catches that and it becomes front page news that you know data is being shared by this company in a way it's not supposed to be so you know people need accountability is what it all comes down to right and holding people formally accountable has to do with the execution and enforcement of authority so if there are no repercussions for not behaving properly people are going to go on doing whatever they want to do. Right, these are some good questions today, Shannon. They're great questions. Yeah. So um, um, does, I, I, I think I know the answer to this question, but uh, does data steward also quote unquote own the data? No. Um, data steward, and I'm sorry, my uh, my next door neighbor's lawn guys just came, so I don't know if you can hear that through the uh, through my my microphone here. Um, You're all good. But no, they don't own the data. Owning the organization owns the data. The term steward, if you look it up in the definition, is by definition somebody who takes care of something for somebody else. So it doesn't mean that they they own it. Um, first of all, people are going to be willing, more willing to steward the data than they are to own the data and the consequences associated with the data. So no, I don't think, I, I think the word steward is, is maybe softer. And ultimately, somebody has to have the decision-making authority. Maybe you call them the owner. But again, I like the idea of stewarding better than I like the idea of owning the data. And what and Bob, what is a data custodian? That's just a different name somebody has given to the role of the data steward. I mean, I guess it can be defined specifically within an organization. It's not a it's not a role name that I use often at all, if ever. Um, but it is 
you know, sometimes the custodian is somebody who's just making certain that the data is clean. Think of it in terms of like a custodian within your within your company, the person that's coming to clean up afterwards. You don't really want to view a custodian as being that way. I don't like the term custodian, but that's how I interpret it. Oh, will the common data matrix be shared along with slides? And yes, we have that, unless you have an updated version, but we have that to, link, and, to send and out. Anybody, anybody who has questions about it can feel free, feel free to reach out and ask questions about it. I love it. Well, there's so many other great questions, but I'm afraid that is all the time that we have for this webinar. I will get these questions over to Bob. We'll get the answers um, to you uh, in the follow-up email, which again will go out by end of day Monday with links to the slides and links to the recording as well. Thank you everybody for hanging out there with us and being such great attendees and being so engaged in everything we do. We just love it. And Bob, thank you so much as always for another great presentation. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the great questions today. Thanks, y'all. Have a good day.